Okay guys, I've got a great video for you today. It's all about transpiration in plants. You're gonna learn all about how water moves up to 100 meters in some of the tallest trees through the xylem and then evaporates leaving through the stomata. I'm gonna take you through cohesion tension and some of the experiments you need to know about that investigate transpiration. I'm also gonna show you some exam questions to help you apply this knowledge. Now guys, if you like the content, don't forget to like the video because it really helps the channel. So let's do this guys, let's get you the best grades possible. I'll see you in the video. The transport of water in the xylem, AQA, A-level biology. So the transport of water through plants starts with water being absorbed by root hair cells. They're small adaptations on plant cells that increase their surface area to, to volume ratio, speeding up transport. These cells increase the surface area of the root dramatically, meaning more water and minerals can be absorbed per unit of time. Xylem vessels carry water from the roots to where it's needed. And when water evaporates through leaves, and that's through pores called stomata, this process is known as transpiration. And we can actually see in the bottom left diagram there, we've got the phloem on the outside of this vascular bundle here, and the xylem in the middle. Now that's gonna become more important when we start looking at ringing experiments and translocation, so keep that in mind that the phloem tend to be on the outside. Now in the diagram on the bottom right, we can see we've got the stomata at the bottom, which is a small air space on the underside of leaves, and that's controlled by the guard cells. Now energy from the sun, or thermal energy, heat energy, is used to drive this process so in terms of the plant, transpiration is actually passive because the energy is coming from the sun. So the stomata next of all. Well, we mentioned the guard cells and we mentioned that the stomata are pores on the underside of leaves. The opening and closing of the stomata, as we said, is controlled by guard cells. And you can see them in this diagram at the bottom, either side of the stomata. Now, when guard cells are turgid, meaning full of water, the stomata open. And when guard cells lose water, the stomata close. So when the stomata are open, water loss can occur from the plant at a high rate. When the stomata are closed, the plant is going to conserve water. And we can see in the diagram at the bottom that when the guard cells are swollen or turgid, the stoma are open. Now on the right hand side, when water leaves the guard cells because there's more potassium ions outside of the guard cells, the stomata will close. Now it's important to note that plants can actively transport potassium into the guard cells. That will lower the water potential and mean water follows into the guard cells from surrounding cells and that's going to make the guard cells turgid and open up the stomata. So guard cell turga is controlled by the active transport of potassium ions. So let me just grab my pen and show you this. So we can see we've got these red potassium ions on the outside of the leaf there. They get actively transported into the guard cells, okay? And that process is going to use ATP because it's an active process. They're going against the concentration gradient. Now that's going to lower the water potential inside the guard cells. And we know that osmosis is the movement of water from a high water potential to a low water potential across a membrane. So water will move in to the guard cells, increasing turgidity and meaning that the stomata are open. Now when the guard cells are shrunken, that's going to close the stomata. So water will leave the guard cells, reducing the amount of water in that cell. And you can see that represented really nicely in this diagram. And that will close the stomata, conserving water in the plant. So how does water actually leave through the stomata then? Well, firstly, when the humidity of atmospheric air is lower than in the spongy mesophyll around the stomata, water vapor will diffuse out of the leaf down a water potential gradient. So water will evaporate from the cell walls of spongy mesophyll cells. And you can see these cells here. So these are the spongy mesophyll cells just near my video feed here. And these are air spaces around them. So water will evaporate from the walls of spongy mesophyll cells and that will replace the water lost through the stomata 
in the air spaces. Now this evaporation again is due to heat energy from the sun. Now because these spongy mesophyll cells have lost water, water will then enter these cells via osmosis from nearby cells down a water potential gradient. So the cells are surrounding the spongy mesophyll cells, water is going to pass into them down that water potential gradient. And the water potential gradient leads to this transpiration pull that will pull water up through the xylem in a continuous unbroken chain. So let's have a look at that in more detail. Well, cohesion tension is something you really need to know about for AQAA level biology. It's where the positive hydrogen in water is attracted to the negative oxygen and they exert this cohesion together. Cohesion is to stick together, okay? And I like to think about it as like the, the tumbling monkeys from Toy Story, how they all hook onto each other, okay? So cohesion tension is where water molecules form hydrogen bonds with each other. They cohere. Water forms a continuous column up the xylem, pulling water up the stem as water evaporates from the leaf. So as water evaporates from the leaf, that pulls water up the plant through the stem because of these hydrogen bonds. And as the xylem is under tension, as water is pulled through it, this is where the name cohesion tension comes from. Cohesion because the water is attracted to each other. Each water molecule forms a hydrogen bond with another. And tension because the xylem are pulled under tension. Okay, the walls are pulled in under tension as the cohesion tension column moves through it. So this is another example of it here. And we can actually see we've got this chain of water here forming hydrogen bonds between the molecules. And we can see at the top right there, we can see those that dotted line representing hydrogen bonding between the positive hydrogen and the negative oxygen. Now that's known as an intermolecular force because it's between different molecules. So water molecules are cohesively attracted since the molecules are the same substance. So cohesion is when two of the same molecules are attracted to each other. It is related to a dipole. So basically, because water has a negative end and a positive end, di meaning two, pole meaning the charge, two poles. And it's related to intermolecular forces in which gas has a high surface tension. So the water molecules get dragged up this way. Now, adhesion is where two different things are stuck together. So you may have heard of glues like superglue being known as a, an adhesive. And that's where the water sticks to the xylem. And that explains why we have the formation of water droplets on things like windows. So the connection between the water molecule and the xylem vessel is known as adhesive. Now at the bottom left, we can see that the xylem vessel has walls that are strengthened with lignin, okay? Lignin is a really tough, strong polysaccharide in plants that gives structure. So what is the evidence for the cohesion tension theory then? Well, number one, during the day, the diameter of tree trunks decreases, indicating tension as transpiration takes place. During the evening, the diameter of tree trunks actually increases. Number two, holes in the xylem draw air in. Number three, if there's a break in the chain of water in the xylem, transpiration can no longer occur. So the water above the, the break or the bubble will keep getting pulled up through the xylem, but the water below, because it's not cohering with the water above it, is gonna stay where it is. So that's some really strong evidence for the cohesion tension theory. So what are the factors that affect transpiration next of all then? Well, firstly, wind speed. Increased wind speed will move water vapor away from the stomata faster, causing a steeper concentration gradient. Next of all, temperature. Greater temperatures mean more kinetic energy and a faster rate of evaporation and diffusion of water from the leaf. Number three, humidity. The lower the humidity of atmospheric air, the greater the concentration gradient for water to leave the plant. And number four, light. If we have an increased light intensity, this will increase the rate of transpiration. And this is because the stomata open in high light intensities. So that's going to allow water to leave the plant through the pores, through the stomata. So how can we investigate the rate of transpiration next of all? Well, first, we can measure the mass of water lost by a plant per unit of time. You could then change variables such as temperature or light or wind speed to measure the effect. So you could have, for example, 
a potometer here, which is a mass potometer. And basically, we've got a piece of plant tissue, in this case, celery. And water will be drawn up through the celery, through the xylem, and leave through the stomata and the bottom of the leaves. Now, if we have this in the dark and then put a lamp next to it, they can be on two variables, complete darkness and light, then we should see a change in the rate of transpiration. We could put a fan next to it or a fan at different distances away to measure wind speed. We could even do different temperatures. Now, secondly, we could measure the rate of transpiration using a bubble potometer. And this is basically where we cut a shoot underwater, and more on that in a moment, and basically have a bubble within some delivery tubing, and we just track the distance the bubble moves over time. So using the bubble potometer then, you really need to know about this for the exam, and this is common in past paper questions. So you cut the shoot underwater to prevent air bubbles in the xylem, because air bubbles in the xylem would break the transpiration column. We then set up the potometer underwater as well to prevent any unwanted air bubbles in the capillary tubing further along. We add an air bubble by drawing back the syringe on the right hand side here. So if we pull it back, we'll basically cause a pressure gradient in the tubing and a little bit of air will be sucked in. And then we could submerge the end of that tubing back in water and draw the syringe back a little bit more. And then we'll have a bubble that moves along with water above it, okay? Now we can mark the start point of the air bubble using a permanent marker, and then use a stop clock to time the distance moved by the air bubble in a suitable amount of time. Now a suitable amount of time, maybe something like 20 or 30 minutes. This isn't gonna be an incredibly fast experiment, so measuring it every 30 seconds would probably not be appropriate. Now finally, the syringe can be used to reset the apparatus between variables so we can literally just push the syringe in a little bit push the plunger in and that's going to increase the pressure in the tubing and push the bubble back to the start point so let's have a look at how this has come up in the exams next of all so question one the air bubble moved six millimeters in 20 minutes the diameter of the tube was one millimeter now you're given the area of a circle which is pi r squared calculate the rate of water uptake in millimeters cubed per hour. So pause the video and have a go at this question because it's one of those tricky maths in biology questions that I find my students really benefit from and I want you guys to benefit from by having a look at this. So the answer then, we're gonna use 3.14 for pi. So we do 3.14 times 0 0.5 squared. Well, where did I get the 0 0.5 squared from? Well, our equation is pi r squared and we're given the diameter. Now you need to know that the radius is half the diameter, so that's where the 0 0.5 comes from, because half of one is obviously 0 0.5. So that gives us an area of the circle of 0 0.785, okay? Now, what we need to do next is find out the volume. So we're gonna times that by the distance the bubble moves. So we know the area of the circle of the bubble, now we need to know how far it moved. So we times that by six because it says the air bubble moved six millimeters. Okay, but it gives us it in 20 minutes. So that's something to be aware of in a moment. So 0 0.785 times the distance moved, which is six, gives us 4.71 millimeters cubed in 20 minutes. Now AQA will give you one mark for that. We're missing a key part and that's the minutes here. Now the question wants it per hour, and we're giving it per 20 minutes. So we all we do is we times our, our result by three to give us 14.13 millimeters cubed per hour. And the reason is because 20 goes into one hour three times, so we times it all by three. Next question, give a method to calculate the surface area of the plant leaves. Now I've included this question because it's a really tricky one, guys. So if you get this right, well done. So have a go at this now. So the answer then, you would draw around the plant leaves on graph paper and count the squares. Now I thought that was a really tricky question to get right. Question three then, when preparing a microscope slide showing a cross section of plant stem, so that's a thin slice, explain why it is important that the plant tissue is very thin. So have a go at this. 
So the answer is single layer of cells for one mark. Or you could have said so that light will pass through for another way to get the mark. Okay, guys, that's transpiration and the movement of water in plants covered. I hope you learned something from this as always. Let me know what you want to see next in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.